next story is Batan Doro, the Pyongyang Lantern by Japanese 111 students. Mukashi Mukashi. There once was a samurai named Shinzaburo and a doctor named Shijo. They went fishing on a quiet river. As they sat on the water, Shinzaburo heard the soft melody of a koto. What lovely music that only I can hear. I must go find the player. Shinzaburo left the boat and headed for the shore. Before he knew it, he reached the house from which the koto music was coming. <coughs> for hours, and as the sun began to set, Otsui withdrew a fan from her robes and presented it to Shinzaburo. Please take this. It was the last thing my mother gave to me before she died. I want you to have this as a token of our new friendship. At last, the evil man has been found. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Father, please stop. Father? What father? You said he was dead. He was poisoned, yes, but not dead. His second wife ran away with the servant. Before they left, they tried to kill my father. He survived the attack, but his mind was left unhinged. I'll kill you! Father, please, it is I, your daughter, Atsuya. Leave this man alone! But her father's rage was too great, and he would not listen to his daughter. He swung his blade at Shinzaburo, but Otsuya protected him. This serves you right, Kumi, my second wife. And now, being Jero, my servant, you will also pay with your life. As no. <laughs> Shijo. What? What happened? Where's Otsuya? He fell asleep. That's what happened. Who is Otsuya? She's the fan. Then it wasn't a dream. But how? Shijo, the Koto, do you hear that? All I hear is the river. Go back to sleep, my friend. You sound like you're still dreaming. The two returned to Nezu, whereupon Shinzaburo was met with an old family friend, Yusai. Shinzaburo, my dear friend. Kumbakwa, how are you this evening? Not well, I'm afraid. What's got you down? It's a beautiful night. Forget your troubles and go out. Have a little fun. But Shinzaburo remained restless. He could not forget about Otsuya. As night fell, Shinzaburo lay awake, thinking of his dream. And around midnight, he heard the sound of Gaiden. The sound louder and nearer until it stopped outside his door. Shinzaburo, it is I, your mistress, to see you. Otsuya, come in, please. The two women glided into the room, both much paler than before. But Shinzaburo, overjoyed to see Otsuya again, saw nothing amiss, and did not ponder why the women from his dream were now in his room. Shinzaburo and Otsuya talked and talked as they had before, and as dawn, but as the first rooster crowed, Mistress, please, we must go before anyone else finds us. Hesitantly, Shinzaburo let them go. That morning, Shinzaburo awoke very late and was drained of energy all day. All he could think about was the coming night and how he hoped that Otsuya might visit him again. And indeed she did. The two continued to meet night after night, and soon rumors began to spread. Did you hear? Shinzaburo was spending his night with the ghost. They say he been sitting, sitting up all the night behind his shoki screen. And the two moves in as, it, as if they are in deep conversation. Shinzaburo is a danger. Yusai overheard the rumors and went to Shinzaburo. But Shinzaburo laughed and dispelled the rumor of a ghost. He showed me. He laughed again and showed <laughs> And showed Yusai the fame and told him the story of how he met Otsuya. But Yusai, still concerned, went to Dr. Shijo to verify the story. Dr. Shijo, is all this true? It is true we went fishing on that river eight years ago. But why are you asking about something that happened so far back then? Eight years ago? Not recently? Come to think of it, it was around the same time as the Ajima family tragedy. The insane father killed his daughter and her servant and then turned the blade on himself. I think their old house was along the river that we fished on. 
You sighed, more certain than ever, consulted a monk near where the Ajima family was buried. He told the monk everything he knew about Shuntaburo's situation. This is very terrible indeed. It means that the Suya and Yoni spirits are, are disturbed at the third and are wandering in the night. The lantern on the Suya's grave has not been uh, disturbed since her death years ago. This is very terrible indeed. Shuntaburo only has a few days to live. What? Is there nothing you can do to save him? There may be a way, but since the Buddha must follow my instructions, exactly as this demon is to be exercised. The monk went to Shinzaburo and told him to place special sutras over every door, window, and opening in his home. He also told Shinzaburo to chant all night, and then the ghost would not be able to enter. Shinzaburo did as he was told, and that night, Matsuya and Yone came. Shinzaburo! Please let me in, as you always do, and let us talk together again. But Shinzaburo continued his chanting. Shinzaburo, please! I have nothing else to live for in this world! Please, please let me in. But Shinzaburo did not let her in that night, nor the next. For twenty nights, Otsuya begged at his door, and each time he refused her entrance. Otsuya, I too want to see you, but I cannot. I must not. Please understand this and forgive me. On the twenty-first night, Otsuya approached the door more solemnly than she ever had before. Shinzaburo, tonight will be the last night I come to see you, and after this, I will never come again. Wait, will this really be your last night? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Otsuya, I know if I never see you again, I will never have the world to go on. I've done a terrible thing by trying to banish you. Shinzaburo, weak from 21 continuous nights of chanting, tore down the sutras and let Otsuya in. She flung herself upon him, just as the first rooster crowed. The next morning, Yusai and the monk went to Shinzaburo and found all the doors and windows flung open. They rushed inside to find Shinzaburo dead on the floor, old, white, and emaciated, as if all the life had been sucked out of him. And yet, when Yusai looked closer, he could see Shinzaburo smiling. After that, <laughs> after that, when the monk visited Otsuya's grave, the peony lantern, which had been kept so perfect and new for eight years, lay knocked over as if it had been torn down by a strong wind.